Welcome to this walkthrough of the car rental financial model from eFinancialModels.com. The purpose of this Excel spreadsheet template is to assist you when planning the launch of a new car rental company and you might need to prepare a business plan or you want to explain your business to capital providers such as banks or investors so that they can understand the risks and merits of a new venture in the car rental space. Before we start, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel by hitting the subscribe button. What is the structure of this template? This template has various worksheets, as you can see here. We have a worksheet where basically we collect all the assumptions for estimating the revenues, the cost, the investments and the financing structure to build the business plan. We have a one-page executive summary which summarizes the end result of the resulting plan. We have a sheet with more detailed analysis which includes all the tables, charts and breakdowns so that you can dive into the assumptions and what actually this business plan entails. Then we also have here a worksheet included, which gives you an opportunity to basically select any, any year of your financial plan and you can track month by month what your expected forecast will be so that you can better understand what this business plan means in terms of targets to hit on a monthly basis. Then we also have a worksheet which, where we go into break-even analysis. We can select which year we are going to analyze. We then have a column which basically summarizes what we have assumed in our business plan. And we are going to calculate how many, how big needs to be the car fleet in order to reach break-even. And we can compare this, as you can see here, the car fleet would need to be 65. In our business plan, we have 95. So you can see how this relates to your business plan. And we could also simulate if not the number of cars is the variable, but let's say the pricing is, um, is the unknown. Then we can compare what would be the required minimum rental price per day compared to the business plan in order to reach break even. Another worksheet then is needed to, which basically includes all the, which another worksheet is needed, which then includes all the calculations required to build this plan. So we take the assumptions from the assumption sheet and on these sheets are all the calcul uh, calculations. And as you can see, we have here a forecast, which is prepared on a monthly basis. This goes 10 years out. And then we aggregate this forecast into a yearly forecast so that we can obtain the big picture. What does this mean on a multi-year basis? And on the sheets are basically all the calculations included. How to work with this template? We have included a sheet with instructions here where you can find some tips on how to best work with the template and also some information about the key concepts used in this template. And we also suggest a work plan consisting of five steps. The first step is basically to start entering assumptions. We have here an area where you can enter the general assumptions, such as the currency of your forecast and also the start year of your first forecast year. Then we start with entering how many cars a car rental business will have. In case this is an existing business, you might already have some cars at the beginning. So we can simply enter it here. And then the question is how many new cars are going to be added? So if you have a first expansion phase, we add 95 cars, we add them together what we have at the beginning. So we end up with a certain number of cars and we can also break down what type of cars our car fleet will have. You can also see that this expansion plan is basically has a time plan and this time plan then defines when the cars will be purchased. In addition to this assumption, we can also set the general start of operations. So let's say we start to operate in March. So we enter month three 
And then you can see that our forecast reacts and we start to generate revenues as of March. These cars will either be owned or they will be leased. So what we are going to do is to define first at the beginning how many of the existing cars are owned, how many are leased. And we will enter also for each of these expansion steps how many of these total cars or of each category are going to be owned or how many are going to be leased. If they are going to be owned, then they will basically be, need to be purchased. These are the costs per car and they will then end up in the capital expenditures the investment which goes into the cars. If the cars are going to be leased, this will result in a monthly lease expense. And you can see that we have here car leasing costs, which is basically at the end a monthly expense per car type. And depending on how many cars are leased each year, we are basically, this will then result in the respective leasing car leasing costs. The next aspect we need to consider is how long we are going to operate these cars. Rental cars, most likely they prefer to be to use new cars. So once these cars reach a certain age, they will, they will most likely be sold. So for that reason, we have inserted here a time frame, how many months these cars will be owned. After that, they will be sold to the market. Then the question becomes, are we going to replace the cars or not? So at the moment, you see if I put in here, no replacement, all these cars are not going to be replaced. So what happens is once these cars leave, reach end of life, we are going basically to dispose the cars. So the number of cars would go down if you're not going to replace them. But if these 95 cars from the first expansion step reach 36 months, we are now going to basically replace them. So this means we will basically have to incur capex, but we will also get the sales proceeds from selling the cars. And we will then also for the lease cars, we'll then have to basically lease new cars. And in that sense, the number of our car fleet does not go down. It would go up by any new cars added to our fleet in the sense of expanding the size of our fleet. Then we are going to complete the required budget for capital investments. So we might have a building with car parkings or a small rental office. So this building can either be owned or rented and depending which category it is, it either goes into capital expenditure or we will expense it under the normal operating expenditures if it's a monthly rent expense. This then allows us to build a capex budget. So we'll have the cost of the, ex of the purchasing cars. Keep in mind that's only a few cars we're going to purchase because we actually are going to lease the majority of it. So otherwise our capex costs would even be higher. We have to expense in this case, we're going to own the land and buildings. So we have to account for that. We also have to invest something in other items and this way we actually can calculate our total investment costs for to start this business. Now let's have a look at our income assumptions. How much income can we derive from car rentals? What we have here is a schedule which basically allows us to estimate how many days of rentals per month we can obtain on average. So we can estimate the average rental period here again by car type. If there is an idle time between rentals, we enter that in the number of days. And in this case, we can calculate how many times a car will be rented per month and also the number of, of rental days we can charge to customers. These are the maximum days available to us, but it doesn't mean that we are going to rent these days. What we need to take into account are, is the esti estimated occupancy factor. How many of our cars are going to be rented at any given point of time? So in this case, you can see that on average, we expect that 84, 85% of our cars will be rented every day. 
and this then allows us to apply also the average rental rate we can obtain from renting the cars and this will then give us an estimate of the rental income. Both occupancy and car rental rates might be subject to seasonality, meaning that these factors that can change from month to month during the year. We have created here a schedule which basically can take this into account and you can basically enter by how much your price level and occupancy levels will go up or down during specific months during the year. Then another question is, apart from the basic car rentals, what will be your other services you can charge by renting additional items or selling additional services, assistance services? How many of your customers are going to purchase these rental options and what will be the expected income per, per month you think you can obtain from renting these services? Then another stream of income can be once these cars reach the, their end of life age, in this case after these 36 months. At what price can these cars be, uh, be sold again? In this case we just enter the percentage of purchase value. These are just example figures, you will need to enter your own assumptions. We can check on average how much we think we can obtain per car. And then depending on how much we depreciate it, we basically can either book a gain or a sale from selling these cars as well. We have a table for other income to account for and then we can obtain a full view on how much, what will be the expected revenues we can obtain from this business. The remaining assumptions we need to enter are the costs. Here we differentiate between direct and indirect costs. As mentioned, we already covered the car leasing costs. Then we have car related costs. These costs relate to the size of our car fleet at any given uh, month. And then we might have other related costs related to income, to the sources of income and this then allows us to estimate the direct costs per car and also the expected gross profits. On the indirect cost side, we have to account for expected number of employees, their salary levels and other operating costs which are needed to run this business. Then the model will basically run the calculations and build the business plan for us. There is a last check we need to do, that means how much financing is required. We then also need to decide how much of, finance, of the financing can be obtained from bank financing and how much from equity. So the way this, the logic works here is that for each of the expansion steps, we can basically specify how much of the investment cost should be financed by debt and then account for a debt schedule. We enter the interest rate, we give us some time until we start servicing the debt and we specify the debt repayment period until the debt is fully repaid. Taking debt financing into account will then result into our required remaining equity financing to start this business. This will have to be injected at the beginning of the year because we are immediately going to purchase cars. This will then also raise the question if the amount is pretty high, you might also need to look for investors. In case you're looking for investors, you need to build an investment case. How many years do you think they will need to be investment? In this case, we put up an expected period of 10 years. At the end of these 10 years, what will be the expected exit valuation? In this case, five times EBITDA. Or if you have a property, in this case, we value it separately at 7% cap rate. We have foreseen up to four um, shareholders. The question is, who is contributing how much of the required equity financing amount and who is getting how much in the equity stake? The business plan also has here an option to model expected dividend payouts. If you don't use it, just put the year 99, which is way beyond our forecast period. If you want to use it, you can define at which years you're going to start paying dividends. Either cash sweep means we pay all 
We pay out any cash, which basically goes beyond a 3.5 million in this case. Cash position on the balance sheet, or we could also use a percentage of the net income to distribute every year. In this case, I'm not going to use it, so we just deactivate this so it doesn't interfere with our other calculations. When reviewing your first draft of the business plan, maybe a good way to start would be the executive summary as it gives you a high level picture of your business plan and you can basically see what is your plan. You can see in this case it means you're planning to expand the size of the business. Uh, the reason is that you're consistently expanding your car fleet. You can also see the occupancy rate, that how it fluctuates over the course of one year. And you then, if you look at the, at the financial forecast, what is reflected here is an increase in car rental income because our fleet increases. This then also drives related income and also once cars reach end of life, either is a small either gain or loss from sale of car we have to take into account and this then will give us the expected revenues. We can then go further and the point here what we want to see is, is to make sure that our business is going to be profitable so we have enough buffer. What we also want to see on this business plan is the relationship between financial debt and the cash on our balance sheet. We want to make sure that we don't run out of cash. And as you can see here, there is a debt added, but quickly being repaid. Once the debt is repaid, we basically, as per this business plan, it seems that we can finance the business from operating cash flows and the cash will just add up on our balance sheet. We also want to make sure that the level of debt financing is not excessive. In this case, four times 4.1 times EBITDA might be a bit high, but if this is really so that profitable, maybe we actually could uh, we could go with that. If not, we would have to either think about um, reducing the number of cars or taking on less debt or using more leasing. So this would be options to study. Now the remaining task will be to go through all these uh, tables and reports and make sure everything is lined what you are planning to do. As you can see here, we have reports for basically the annual forecast and then you have a sheet with the budget analysis. You want also have another look at the break-even analysis and make sure that basically you fully understand the forecast. If something needs to be fine-tuned, you might want to go back to change and update your assumptions. And in this way, basically get a thorough understanding of your expected cash flows, how your cash flow statement will look like and where you will end up in terms of your cash forecasted cash balance. And then this will basically lead to the financial metrics of your business plan. What will be the expected? In this case, you can measure it with the IRR of the of your free cash flows, or or how many years and months it will take to to get a payback on your investment. The shorter, in this case, uh, the better. I hope this walkthrough was useful and provided some insights into how you can prepare a financial plan when starting a car rental business. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and visit our website efinancialmodels.com. A link to the model template is included in the description below. Thank you for watching.